So hello there, welcome everybody. First of all, welcome Valerie and this little girl, Vanessa. Pleased to meet you, Valerie and Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Pleased been, to meet you too. We've been waiting for this moment so long, so I'm very happy to have you here. So, as for a little credit, I would love to have a little information from you because I know a lot of you. So, Valerie is a professional teacher in, uh, in a school and she's been awarded and then also she won the Teacher of the Year at the school so if you could a little bit explain it, that would be fantastic okay oh where do you want me to start from wherever Just, you like um a so, background about my studies and all uh, i wanted to teach you know, or is that yes, a bit a little too bit. much no 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 uh, whichever it is uh, it is fantastic uh, because you're not from england so yes. you have a fantastic history okay. that's why i would love to share so i'm listening okay i came to england in 2000 um, I came to study in the UK and I went to college here and after completing my college course I progressed on to university I studied at Aston University for three years and after completing that I also did um, two years of work in accounting at two different organizations and then from that I went into teaching I've been teaching now for six years that's fantastic. So, lovely. And how did it happen? You've been awarded and then you won at the end the uh, Teacher of the Year. Yes, after teaching for a year at the current college that um, I'm employed with, I was given an award for um, excellent co an excellent contribution to um, just the development of education, particularly in developing um, electronic uh, methods of um, teaching and learning, so um, online learning mainly. So, fantastic. After two years? A year. A year? After yes. a year? Yes. Uh, just a very little thing, because uh, I know you've been a little bit not too well, but you are okay now, you, you're happy to sit here, so no need to have any details, but I'm so happy to see you smiling. Yes. <laughs> so you're right. Yes, I'm fine, yes. Fantastic. Yes. So. Um, I prepared with some questions. Uh, in in terms of uh, imagine if somebody arrived to this country and they have no clue about any financial uh, stuff here. So, uh, shall I ask you questions, or would you like to start, like for instance, as a foreigner, and then explain a little bit details, or how would you plan it? Which one would be preferred? Maybe if you ask me questions, because I'm not okay. sure where you no, want me to. Absolutely. Imagine. Mm -hmm. You can imagine because also you arrived to the country. Yes. Uh, so um, I think very important when we arrived, uh, when we're going to work, we, we talk about the national insurance number, but uh, uh, we need bank account mm -hmm. and national insurance number. So how does it work? What, what what we need to do? Well, one of the main things is well before you can even get a national insurance number or get a salary into. Um, from your employees you need to have a bank account most banks in the UK will offer a foreigner what they call an offshore bank account meaning it's available for people who are not UK residents mm. who might be on a visa or um, a European not a Union, European citizens. Union mm. citizen yes um, you might Often they'll ask you to get a sponsor or a, ref a reference and mm. someone who will um, verify your identi I identity in order, mm -hmm. in order for you to be um, allowed to open that account. So the very first thing, without having any national insurance number, we need to go to the banks mm -hmm. and then open a bank account. Yes. Okay. okay. So we've got the bank details. So the next step is go to. The national, national insurance, insurance. So the job centre. Yes, um, you will need a national insurance number, and you need to um, apply for one. The best way to do that is to contact your local job centre plus. Um, you, they'll you you can walk into the job centre plus office, um, anyone that's nearest to where you live, and they will give you a telephone number. After you're given that telephone number, you need to ring and they will arrange an interview um, for you to come in to get your national insurance number. Okay. What answer would you like to go to, to see, see the fishes? Okay. Okay, I'm back now because Vanessa is gone for watch the fishes. 
Okay, so we got the bank, bank account, we have national insurance number. What is the next step? So obviously we need some incomes is work. Yes. So definitely we can't... Uh, can we work uh, before we have all those or what do you think? You can start um, working before you have your national insurance number and what you'll need is to get a letter from your employer saying what job you're doing uh, and just to confirm when you started the job. You can bring this in with the interview um, with you when you go mm. for your national insurance interview. If you haven't got a job yet, you can still apply for a national insurance number because you'll need it anyway once you mm. start working. Okay. So, I think it's a good idea if we could talk, for instance, a bit uh, when we are a normal employee. So when we work for somebody and uh, a little bit of uh, of the basic tax info or what, what we need to look after for our benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay then, so I started to work, I got the salary, so what we need to look forward. Okay, the first thing is when you have your national insurance number, it allows you to um, claim benefits, um, pay your national insurance contributions and also pay your income tax. What will happen is, um, I'll start with the income tax. Mm -hmm. um, your employer, uh, if you're working for someone, your employer will deduct your income tax directly from your pay and pay it to Her Majesty Revenue and Customs, which is our office here in the mm. UK, on your behalf. And this is called the PAYE, Pay As You Earn system. Mm -hmm. Oh, so the insurance and the tax being deducted by the employer. employer. Yeah. Mm. If for any reason you um, are unable to work, it might be that you're sick or you lose your job, then having paid your national insurance contributions means that you will be entitled to claim your benefits and that's why you need your national insurance number because that's what the tax office will use to calculate how much benefits or how much national insurance contributions you paid and what benefits you're entitled to. Mm -hmm. Basically the national insurance number is kind of identification yes. number so whatever we do mm -hmm. everything links yes. to the, uh, this number. Okay then. Mm -hmm. And um, all benefits are different, am I right? So uh, the work allowances, sick allowances, child benefits are all linking what is your history in this country. Yes. So uh, does it matter where you're from and what you've done before or you're starting here from zero? Uh, when you apply for your national insurance number they'll often ask if you have anything like savings or investments in other countries because some of the benefits that you're entitled to um, are only limited depending on what they call well what we call means tested meaning if you've got a certain amount of investments or savings then you're not entitled to these benefits so even though you start um, by applying for national insurance here in this country and it's linked to what you do in this country if you have any investments or mm -hmm. savings elsewhere it might impact on the benefits that you can get in this country mm -hmm. uh, but if you have no any savings and uh, then uh, we would like to apply for job allowances yes. etc et it is all linking to our history yeah, in this yeah, country yes. so it doesn't mean somebody arrived and got the NI number and go to the job center and got immediately the job center uh, job allowances so it needs to have some history yes yes uh, so um, okay we start to work and uh, how much tax we need to pay as an employee okay um, we have first of all what is known as the personal allowance the personal allowance is eight thousand one hundred and five pounds at the moment that means if you earn less than eight thousand one hundred and five you don't pay any tax at all so for people who are mm -hmm. working part-time perhaps or working mums um, who, who have some time mm -hmm. off um, they won't pay the full amount of they won't pay any tax at all on mm -hmm. that eight thousand one hundred and five anything above that is then charged at um, different rates depending mm. on how much you earn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously we have a tax uh, rate. Rates, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the first rate is 20% up to about £34,000. So if you earn between 8105 and 34000 you'll pay 20% in as income tax mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the second tax rate is 40% so anything above 
34,000 to 150,000 is taxed at 40%? Uh, I think we all would be very happy as a foreigner to arrive in this country and thinking about immediately to pay 40% uh, percent of the tax because it's a quite good wage, yes. I believe. Uh, it could happen not once. Uh, if somebody goes to work and uh, the, the, the workplace, the employer immediately dedicated the money for mm -hmm. the first salary much more than this 20 percent or even it shouldn't be so what could we done what could we do if if it happens they will uh, correct it afterwards what happens is you can reclaim any overpaid tax often when you just start um, working the um, HM Revenue and Customs the tax office will give you what they call an emergency tax code they give mm -hmm. that to the employers to immediately Just, deduct uh -huh. an amount. It might not be the correct, correct amount. So what will happen is at the end of the tax year, which is the sixth well the fifth of April is when the tax year mm -hmm. ends, you can claim back not any, earlier. Not any no, earlier. No, okay. You have to wait until the end of okay. the tax year and you can claim back any overpaid tax. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is walk into the tax office um, or your local job centre and ask them for an application form. Complete the application form with your national insurance number and your employer's details. They will have the information already because through the PAYE mm -hmm. system and they'll calculate whether you've overpaid or not. And if you've overpaid, mm -hmm. um, they'll just um, refund their money, the money in your bank account. Uh -huh. I see. So it's, we don't need to start at the workplace mm -hmm. to complaining. No, so we need to no, wait, wait and then we can. So it's not a workplace, not an employer. Uh, fault. Yes. It's just how the system, system works. works yes. Okay. So it is a very good point, I think, because uh, we don't need to worry too much. Yes, obviously the money we are missing, but uh, it's nobody's fault. It's yes. just the system how it works. And usually, what happens is everyone that pays income tax will be sent a form from the tax office called the P60, mm -hmm. which gives details about your total salary for the year and the total tax that you paid. So you'll have some idea. Um, if you've overpaid or underpaid mm -hmm. and then you can if you think that you've overpaid then you can yeah. approach the tax office mm. so every year we get this yes. uh, this report fantastic um, okay then so I spent some time uh, at work and getting order I'm going to close to the pension so even just uh, what do you think oh, what could you say please about the pension do we get any any uh, normal pension will be paid by ourselves so how the system works here in the UK? Okay, there are three different types of pension systems. The first one is what we call the state pension system or the state pension scheme. Um, everyone that pays national insurance contributions, mm -hmm. that's another reason why it's important to have your national insurance number because mm -hmm. you pay contributions, you're entitled to the state pension. Alright then, so this is the first that's version. That's the first mm -hmm. one. Um, the second is you, you can have on top of your state pension what we call an occupational pension and that's set up by your employer. Um, mm -hmm. A recent government legislation means that all employers should offer an, an occupational pension. Um, mm -hmm. The way the occupational pension works is your employer will deduct money from your salary every month and they'll also pay a percentage on top of that towards your mm -hmm. pension scheme. So you'll contribute from your salary and your employer will pay a percentage of what you've contributed into your pension mm -hmm. pot. So just to be clear, this uh, contribution from the workplace means it's going deducted from my salary yes. mm -hmm, even if I don't want it. Even Well, at the moment the legislation is that all all employers need to register all their employees into this scheme mm -hmm. but if you don't want to you can opt out so you can choose not to be a part mm. of that scheme and how much okay. percentage is this it, it varies it varies. depends on the can I negotiate in the workplace or not really not really because normally the way it works is they'll have a, a scheme that all mm -hmm. employees all of their employees will be a part of and they'll set whatever mm -hmm. um, they can the contributions that will be made mm -hmm. towards it but normally you can expect perhaps you pay five percent five to ten percent of your salary, salary and the employer will pay um, probably two to three percent on top, top. okay then this but is, it's completely yeah. optional you can opt out it's just um, a way the government is encouraging more people to mm -hmm. um, save so like I said I can say I don't choose. want it yeah. all right then so this one sorted 
uh, in the workplace and uh, I guess the third one is when you want to do it by yourself. Yes, the third one is called a private or personal pension that you set up yourself. Uh, the best way to do that is obviously approaching um, your, your local bank or investment company if mm. you know of one. Um, some um, insurance companies will also offer, like life insurance mm. companies will also offer um, a pension plan scheme. You will negotiate with the provider how much you want to save, what you can afford mm. towards your pension. And uh, just roughly from to the top could be uh, on the sky I guess but what do you think what is the minimum where we better to start 50 pound 100 pound 150 which I makes think, a difference for I think our most private pension schemes you'd expect them to to offer a pension plan of say a hundred to two hundred pounds every month that's mm -hmm. what you'd probably consider mm -hmm. saving yeah. Uh, very important. Yep. Carry on. Yeah, I was going to say the thing about it is for you to shop around to look at what's mm. available, um, what the banks are offering or what the investment companies are offering, because it's all really optional mm. what you want to to save. Um, so it's looking at what product okay. best suits you really. I think uh, if we wouldn't think about uh, ourselves, only we would pay the national insurance contribution. Uh, without having any from job, without having any private one, we would have very little pension. Am I right? Yes, correct. The current state pension is now ninety-seven pounds, ninety-seven pence per week, something like that. So, less than a hundred pounds per week is so what if, you'd get uh, when you retire if you. Okay. So, for instance, if I earn hundred thousand, but I don't pay any private, I don't pay any companies. The second version, the occupational. I would pay only the very first one, which is necessary, we must do it. I would get, even if I earn 150,000, only this 90, less than 100 pounds yes, per week. Yes, yes. Okay, it doesn't matter how many years I've been working. No, it will be the same. Okay. If, we don't, if we won't look after ourselves, then we would be very yes. hungry, starving. Yes. <laughs> Am I right? It is so true. So, and it's better to start as early as possible. As early as possible, mm -hmm. as soon as you start working. Lovely. Um, I think, uh, do you have something to add to this? Uh... I just wanted to say um, in terms of the tax rates and the benefits and the pension, um, the government makes changes mm, yes. every year. So, so this is the current? Did, yeah, this is the current rate, rate. but it could change. Mm. Normally what will happen um, for at the, uh, on the 5th of April, if there are any changes, they'll come into plan the 5th of April every year. Mm -hmm. And the government normally makes an announcement before that. Okay. All right then. Uh, so, for instance, I decided to to go being self-employed, and uh, because I had enough of my boss, blah blah blah. So, what shall I do? I know what I'm going to do. Where I'm going to earn the money? What what official papers I need to set? Or how do I do this? Okay, um, setting up your business um, as a self-employed sole trader is fairly simple. All you really need to do is register with Her Majesty Revenue and Customs, which is the tax office, mm -hmm. um, to get a national insurance number if you haven't already got that, um, and just to say what the business name is and what business you'll be operating. It's fairly simple. You will be paying the normal um, tax rates just as anyone else who was mm -hmm. working, so it's still the 20%, 40% and 50%. So it's, 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 the, same. it's the same. same. Mm -hmm. No difference, except obviously that you're going to pay that on your profits. So you need to keep a record of the income that you're that's coming into your business mm -hmm. if you're self-employed and any business expenses that you pay out and then the difference between the income and the expenses, which are your profits, mm -hmm. that's what um, you'll be taxed on. So. Uh, that would be kind of my salary. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're not coming. Uh, that uh, we're not taking off the salary mm -hmm. uh, because there is a clear difference yes. between the income and the expenses. Yes. That's our salary. Yes. So I can't argue. Uh, my salary was only thousand pound per month, and the rest I keep saving for no, something. No. Mm -hmm. I, I heard you can do it backwards for free months. Yes, you can do. Mm -hmm. Yes, if uh, So I can start immediately yes. and when I just report it to the HM revenue yes. after three months. Normally what will happen is you don't have to you, you you pay your tax at the end of 
the um, tax, tax year, year, which is mm -hmm. the 5th of April. So after the 5th of April, you need to complete what they call a tax return. Mm -hmm. And on that tax return is where you record what income mm. has come into the business, what expenses you've paid and the profits that you've made and what you think you should be paying in tax. Mm. Uh, once you've sent that off to the tax office, they'll then assess to see if what you've calculated is right oh. and the tax that you paid is right. And again, if you've overpaid, you can claim it back. Mm. If you've underpaid, then they'll ask you to pay mm. the difference. And yes, if you haven't yet set up the business, yet reported you can um go Same. back mm -hmm. yes and, okay. and, and do your calculations based mm -hmm. on that, previous so the calculation is just when the end of the tax year yes uh, that's but, how it yes. should be done normally mm -hmm. but if you ha if you haven't done it if you haven't set up the business yet or mm -hmm. done your tax return then you can do it um from three months previous. Mm -hmm. So we pay the same rate of yes, the tax? Yes, the same as totally. someone who is employed mm -hmm. and you pay your national insurance contributions By as well. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay then, so does it cost any if I would like to say, oh, I'm going to be self-employed from now on, do I need to pay for this form to fill up or...? No, it doesn't cost you anything to, to, mm -hmm. set, to set up an set own business. No, no. I mean the self-employed business. No. Okay, we talked about this being self-employed, uh, but what's happened if we're growing or for any reason, we would love just set up a company, a partnership or a, a limited company. Okay, if you want to set up a partnership including other people in in your business, then it works quite similar to a self-employed mm. um, sole trader. Uh, all you need to do is introduce the person into the business and have them register again with uh, Her Majesty Revenue and Customs. They'll pay the same rate of tax. What will happen is, well, of Officially, you should have it um, written into an agreement um, that will say in the agreement, we call that a deed of partnership, mm -hmm. which there, there'll be an agreement between the partners um, as to how much profits each partner will get, how much money they'll invest, each partner mm -hmm. will invest in, in the business and how they'll deal with changes. Um, if you have a solicitor to draw up that deed of partnership, then it becomes legal. Mm -hmm. So everyone in the partnership has to stick to that agreement. Mm -hmm. But in terms of taxation, whatever profits that you've agreed, mm -hmm. you'll be taxed on the same rate as a self-employed mm -hmm. person. So again, the 20%, the 40%, the 50% on whatever mm -hmm. profits from the business that you take home. Okay, so again, there is no difference between uh, this is the company business yes. and this is my personal business. Yes. It's the same. For, for the partnership. Partnership, for yes. The partnership. Okay, that's yeah, very it's important. A, it's the same. Um, the only difference is you have more people involved yeah, that's all. and you need to let the mm -hmm. uh, tax office know that and it's best to draw up an agreement so that everyone mm -hmm. um, accepts sure. yes, what's Secure. happening. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, and also it doesn't cost any penny. It doesn't cost anything for a partnership. Mm -hmm. Slightly different for a company, yes. so I'll talk about a company okay, afterwards. Then. Lovely. So, uh, alright then, so let's talk about the next step, uh, because we are extremely and rapidly growing, so we would love to set up, because I think after a limit we need to set up a company, am I right? No, not necessarily. No. You, there, there is no limit, so you as a sole trader could even set up as a company. Oh, really? Yes, you, d you, d you don't have to have many people so I can in just the business, you can open. decide. The, the, the thing with the company is, um, again, the tax system is slightly different for companies. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, if you set up a limited company, it means um, whatever you've invested in the business, that's the only loss you'll mm -hmm. um, have if the business doesn't work well. Um, but in terms of setting up a business, what you need to do in, for a company, mm -hmm. you need to register with Companies House. Mm -hmm. um, that's um, the UK organisation that is in charge of overseeing all companies, companies. In, in the UK. So you could start as a sole trader or as someone self-employed and decide that you want to turn the business into a company. It doesn't have to be too big. It doesn't mm. have to have many people. All you have to do is register as the organization as a mm -hmm. company. All right, and so we have one sub back for the final part. Uh, we register to company houses and then we can just start or what we need to do. How much does it cost? Does it cost any or what's the difference? Uh, it costs about 13 pounds to register the online. Pay. 
But if you do um, paper-based registration, it's mm -hmm. about 40 pounds. Um, you can do it online or you can hire an agency, an agent. But it costs. Um, but it will cost, obviously Isn't the agent mm. will charge what they like. But all you really need is having the name and address of the company, um, details of who the director is, um, and your company must have a secretary, so details mm. of the secretary and information about what the company will do, so the nature of the business. So you don't really need an agent. I just closed the door because one has is gone again. That's fine, don't worry. So we need to. You don't really need, need an, an agent, agent if mm -hmm. you have that information, but some people might feel more confident leaving it with an experienced agent mm -hmm. to complete the registration. But you can do, the cheapest way really is to do an online registration for mm -hmm. £13. In terms of the taxes, I guess it's a bit difficult, it's, so you don't need to go in very it's detail. It's fairly simple actually. Really? Again, yes. Um, all companies will pay what we call corporation tax. Um, at the moment, corporation tax is quite low at 23%. Uh, so that's 23% of profits will be paid in taxation. Again, the company will have to keep records of the income mm. that they've made, the expenses that the business has, and the difference, which is your profits. 23% um, of that will be paid as tax. I see. So it's uh, better to set up a company and then uh, I think rather than saying, okay, I'm a self-employed and I earn 150000 I pay 40%, rather than a company pays 23%. Yes. Am I right? Yes. It's just a quick maths. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, even if it's one pound or 150 million pounds. Yes, it's the same, 23%. 23 okay. And I yeah. just want to say, it has been higher in the past, the corporation tax, so it has been 30% in the past. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, 30. there are changes yes. that the government makes. Um, the disadvantage, obviously, of setting up with setting up a company rather than self-employed, with a company you have to keep detailed records of all your accounts and that has to be published. So it can't remain private as if, mm -hmm. if, if you were self-employed you could keep all your business records private, no one would have to see that. Mm -hmm. but, with a, but with a company, you have to file them with the company house. That means every year you have to send them to company house mm -hmm. and they need to be audited by a qualified Perfect. accountant. Mm -hmm. And anyone can actually access that information mm -hmm. about the company. So people might prefer to set up a self employed business private. But if you're cheating, uh, private. there is no problem. No, but <laughs> some people prefer to keep their information and private, and, private mm -hmm. and, and have more control over mm -hmm. what happens in the business as opposed to setting up as a mm -hmm. company really. And even I guess uh, uh, who does the bookkeeping, mm -hmm. the accountancy or even uh, prove it, it costs the money as, yes, as a well. company so you can't do it at home, uh, you have to have somebody, yes, a professional. Qualified, right? yes. Mm -hmm. That's very good, uh, very useful. I really appreciate it. Um, so, in terms of the self-employed or partnership, we don't need to have any professional no formal, accountant, no, no formal. So no, I can do it can by keep myself. All your records. And do we have yes, a guideline so. for this, or is it quite simple or difficult? There isn't any guideline, but when you do your um, tax return. Um, normally the form that you're given um, sort of guides you in terms of the what information you that you need to mm -hmm. um, keep records of. The main thing is just keeping any invoices of sales that you've made mm -hmm. or any um, receipts that you get from purchasing goods and obviously your bank statement and mm -hmm. keeping good bank records. Uh, I think we but I'm not sure, we might have forgotten why you are so sure and that you're so accurate in this field because this is your professionality. So you're teaching accountancy and uh, finance for for students because we talk what you've done, what you yes. achieved, but what you do on a daily basis. Yes, um, yes, I teach accounting, finance and business studies to students at a local further education college. Mm -hmm. um, I teach a range of different ages from um, 14 to adults, um, students who are preparing to go to university, students who have just left um, high school, so mm -hmm. yes, it's, it's what I do every day. Just for the record, <laughs> it's very important. 
Uh, that's fantastic. And uh, my final question, do you have anything to advise to the lovely uh, visitor or viewer what, what they can get, what they need to, what they must look after or... In terms of... Any. If you have some, some advice, so you can say, if, if you think we covered most of them, uh, then I'm most than ha more than happy to say thank you very much. Or no, I think we've covered it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Yes, I can't think of any. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. I would like to say a huge thank you to you yes. on behalf of hundreds of thousand people who are visiting you. So I really appreciate it. Thank you very yes, much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Uh, so we have a little present firstly for your lovely daughter. This oh, is for so Vanessa. <laughs> okay. And thank I you hope much. you don't mind a little flower. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Thank and you. May I so just give you a yes, kiss? Thanks. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Fantastic. <laughs> So, thank you very much. If you have more or anything else, feel free to contact us. You can find us on my website and also on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, so, we would like to say have a lovely rest of the day and say goodbye. See you soon. Goodbye. Thank you.